Yeah, so now uh, we have Anna, who will uh, talk to us about data management planning. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be here. I'm Anna Sesertic. I'm from the Digital Curation Office of the ETH Library, and I will give you a very short, very quick overview about data management planning in general. There will be a lot of information in these slides, but as uh, Iselin said, uh, there will be shared later on, and you will find a lot of uh, clickable links for further information and further resources that can help you. So I hope you won't be overwhelmed by all the information that I will be presenting here. So let's start first uh, by defining what do we actually mean with research data management. It's basically being able to uh, track back what you did a week ago or a month or a year or several years back, uh, also in your own research, find it in um, acceptable um, amount of time and be able to understand your research as well and be able to share it as well and reuse it. So it's uh, managing your data in a way that you can find it fast again, that you can share it successfully, that you can also publish it, and that you can build up on your research. And by data, uh, we mean a lot of things. Uh, there is an official uh, definition here with the data being reinterpretable representation of information in a formalized manner, suitable for communication, interpretation, or processing. But what that means is basically all things pertaining to your research, meaning text documents, the articles you write, um, image files, audio files, but also uh, very important software. I think a lot of you are also working, uh, developing models, uh, writing software and code, and this is also data, and that sometimes goes forgotten. Now, what are roles and responsibilities according to the ETH? Um, everybody of you, uh, when they started working at the ETH, received uh, this document, the Guidelines for Research Integrity. You can also download it uh, here and read it up in case you, you forgot it or you overlooked it, what often happens, so that's not a problem. Um, basically, uh, if you are a project member, uh, you need to make sure that you can trace back all of your uh, research steps that you uh, document your research process and that it can be reproducible. And if you're uh, in the role of a project manager or of a PI, if you're leading a project, you are actually uh, responsible that your team and your team members and, for example, the students you supervise, that they uh, adhere to these uh, principles of good scientific practice and that they do manage data. So your role is to make sure that the data is managed. Of course, if you're in a leadership role, you cannot do that possibly yourself, but you can uh, instruct your students or even uh, uh, set up someone in your group who is the one responsible as a point of contact for these questions. Uh, so it's up to you to make sure that everybody in the group knows about, uh, is aware about the guidelines, and that together you are going in the same direction. So what is the data management plan? Again, a very, very broad overview. Um, it's, a brief, it's a brief plan you, that you should write at the beginning of your project, ideally, and update it during its course. So it's a living document, because when you start researching, you don't always know, uh, for example, how much data you will create and um, where would you be able to store it, just as an example. So you should update it, but you should try in the beginning define what kinds of data will you collect. For example, will be, this be observations? Will be, this be uh, model runs? Um, how do you plan to document and describe the data? Where will you store the data? Again, this is not just meant uh, regarding uh, repositories where you might uh, want to publish your data, but also in-house. So how do you plan to store, it in, uh, to, show, uh, to store it in your group? Do you have any um, 
policies within your research group? Uh, does everybody know where to store, the to store the data that you create? Who is responsible? Uh, also for data security, this may, might be in-group or your IT uh, research, uh, IT supporters. And then another important uh, point is which data do you plan to share and or preserve? So obviously, uh, you cannot uh, possibly share and preserve all data. There are also many failures, but it's important also that people can learn from failures. So, it's up on you to uh, appraise the data and decide which is important uh, to be kept and to be also transferred, for example, to colleagues who are building up on your research so that they don't make the same mistakes you did and that the, everybody can progress together. And of course, how data will be shared and with whom. And why is this important? Um, as Probably a lot of you know uh, data management plans are demanded by funders. Um, maybe also a quick survey, who knows already that uh, the SNF demands data management plans to be submitted for the proposals? Good, fair number. <laughs> this is probably also why right here, it's nice to see that. So we heard about Horizon, we heard about SNF, uh, they are demanding data management plans. So you cannot uh, get funding money for projects if you do not submit a short data management plan delineating all these questions. And this is why I will now talk a bit more uh, into detail about the SNF and data management and what they demand. Um, it all goes back to the SNSF policy on open research data. Regarding open access, my colleague Barbara Hirschman will talk uh, more in depth on that topic, but um, basically the overall goal of the Swiss National Science Foundation is that research data should be freely accessible to everyone. So for scientists as well as for the general public. And the, their minimum requirement is that you make uh, data which is underlying a publication accessible to all. And the data management plan is just one of the tools, just one of the means to reach this goal. Because if you know where your data is, if you know the properties of your data, you can more easily publish it. So the data management plan does not force researchers to open up all their data, just the ones which pertain to a publication, but rather to make and document these informed decisions of what to share and what to keep and where to share it in, in what manner. Another important guideline is that data should be fair, and by this acronym it's meant that they should be findable also online, accessible, interoperable, so that uh, the data can be read and accessed uh, on different uh, operating systems, and reusable. So these are requirements both to researchers and to data repositories and their functionalities. Now, how to submit uh, data management plan to the SNSF. Uh, you can, as I said, a proposal can only be submitted if a data management plan was created, and a data management plan must be created online in the My SNF uh, uh, online tool, online portal. So you cannot upload a DMP which was created otherwise or outside of this tool unless, and this is really a special case caveat in, except in a lead agency process, but uh, let's say for 90% of you, uh, you log in into my SNF and you open up a form and there you need to answer a few questions regarding uh, your data. Uh, the contents of the data management plan are uh, explained on the SNF website as well. However, uh, in our experience, many researchers struggle with these explanations, which is uh, why cre we created instructions and examples for ETH Zurich. So this is a document uh, that you can download. 
don't be afraid it's 30 pages, but the 30 pages are there because uh, with, for each question of the SNF, we give several uh, real-life examples of how you could answer. And we point you also to uh, further information. We give you contact details who you can ask if you have specific questions. <laughs> so I would really suggest uh, you to uh, look, take a look at this document and inform yourself uh, before you uh, start filling in uh, the My SNF form. Also important note here, the DMP should be updated during pr the project. As I said in the beginning, it's not possible to know everything and you are also free to write that in the form uh, if something is unknown and this is not uh, um, an exclusion criteria for SNF. But the final version uh, of the data management plan, once the project is finished, it will be published in the P3 database. So. As I said, we do offer uh, help, but also if uh, you need um, more one-on-one -on -one or group-to-one help, uh, please ask for a workshop or a consultation. We are doing uh, several trainings at the library. Uh, for example, um, the next one will be a webinar on data management plans on the 21st of February. And we are also offering uh, a small, a short training uh, in German on the 20th of March and a larger half-day workshop on data management on the 25th of April. And these dates are all available through the ETH library website. And those are the, the ones which are uh, freely available to all. Uh, but we also do a lot of custom trainings. We go to groups. So um, don't hesitate to ask or send us a mail. Now, as I said, the, if, if you don't need to be afraid to make a mistake in the DMP or write if something is not possible to know at a certain point, because uh, the DMP is assessed only for plausibility and compliance with the open research data policy. So it's not sent to external reviewers. Uh, you need to have one, but it's, it's, if it's not perfect, it's not an exclusion criteria. Um, in case you need to uh, modify something, you can be assigned tasks in the funding decision for the enhancement of the DMP. And um, the SNF is also collecting a lot of frequently asked questions here. And this is an appeal uh, which I should forward you from our colleagues at the SNF is that please, if you are uh, insecure about something, if you don't find your question answered in this FAQ, uh, please write them at this mail address or the at snf.ch uh, with comments, with suggestions, with questions, because they want to improve uh, the DMP they ask of you. So that they, they are also still learning. It's it's in a way a pilot phase, and they are really, uh, they really need feedback from the field. They need feedback from researchers in order to um, make the whole process less of a hassle. But of course, not everybody is funded by the SNF. So what to do with other funders? Um, we had Horizon 2020 mentioned. Um, so let's take a look at this case first. Uh, if your research is funded by Horizon, you can use the DMP online tool, which is a free online tool by the UK Digital Curation Center that helps you create a compliant plan. Basically, what you do is you log in, you create a free account, and you're guided through a questionnaire uh, where, in the end, when you answered all these questions, you can uh, download a Word or PDF document which is a Horizon compliant data management plan which you then can submit with your proposal. So this is what we recommend here. For all other cases, and even in case you do not need to have a data management plan, we still would suggest that you create one because it can really help you with your research. And for that case, uh, we have a data management checklist uh, 
which is a set of very general questions that guide you through several aspects of data management planning that you need to consider. So you can go through it, uh, read through the, the questions that apply to your research. Uh, for example, you can skip the things that do not apply to you. There are also questions regarding, for example, ethical uh, treatment of personal data, or treatment of animals, etc. So obviously, if you work in a field which doesn't uh, work with living organisms, this is not something uh, which uh, touches your topic. But still, it, we, we try to be very general. It's it's a, more like a general guidance that should uh, um, point you to the right directions of what to think about. And uh, the colleagues from the DCC, from the Digital Curation Center, also offer a collection of data management planning examples. So you can go here and see what uh, your colleagues in other disciplines created. And it's being restocked and expanded as we speak. So the, the more and more you'll find more examples. Now, as the time is short, I will just quickly um, breeze through some very few and very general data management tips in practice. And probably most of you know all of this already, but it's, it's a refresher. Consider it as a refresher and something to uh, keep in, in, in mind when managing your data in practice. So very basic file organization tips. Um, keep stuff together that belongs together. As simple as this uh, sounds, it's already a, a very good and very important uh, uh, idea. So make sure that your file path is not too long and crashes on certain operating systems. Make sure that the file names reflect the content of the file and are not just gibberish, which sometimes gets created automatically if you run a model or if you run an instrument. Um, also try to use only ASCII characters and no special characters with uh, diacritics, uh, because depending on the encoding, if you, especially if you change operating systems, for example, you encode something uh, on a Mac and send it to a colleague uh, that who works on, on a Windows, you cannot read it anymore or vice versa. So make sure that uh, this is kept generic. Um, again, operating systems <laughs> unfortunately can make your uh, life hard, so make sure that um, the file names are also written in a way that they're not depending on cases. And a very simple and very, I would say, old tip, but which still surprisingly works, is document your structure and file naming conventions in the README text file. So for example, if you get a new student in your group, uh, you can point it on them uh, and uh, they can see, okay, this is how we write file names for this certain experiment and for this certain instrument, for example. And obviously, an oldie but goodie, uh, please do write dates like that or otherwise you'll have a bad time. Um, so very generic and there, I, I could talk for hours just about that, but you can find further uh, tips also at um, other universities. Obviously from discipline to discipline there are uh, different things that you need to consider. Just keeping stuff together that belongs together is already a very good start and this can be as simple as when your PhD student starts work in your team that you sit together with them and uh, tell them, well, try to keep, for example, the administrative stuff like budget and conference travel away from the academic work and maybe, you know, have a structure for your writing, have a structure for your modeling work, your lab data, etc. And already this very, very basic structure can help in finding data and provide a very, very basic versioning. However, if uh, you really want to make it right, then you would use uh, version control. And this is also something 
where we can help you at the ETH Zurich. So if you're working with code, we offer you GitLab uh, services which are hosted <laughs> at the ETH Zurich. Also, we know a lot of groups work with SharePoint, uh, especially when it comes to documents. So uh, this is possible as well. And our colleagues from the scientific IT services can provide you with hands-on training on Git for code management and also other things and can, can help you set up the solutions in your lab. So uh, please contact them if you need uh, help here. Of course, there, we are aware there are other solutions around as well, like GitHub, Bitbucket, Subversion. However, uh, be aware that these are cloud-based and in case you're dealing with sensitive data, um, it could be something that you should be wary of. So always make sure uh, that your data is safe and only the data which you know are, is allowed to be out there in the cloud is in the cloud and the rest is uh, on safe premises, so to say. And uh, now let's also quickly talk about file formats, which is something often forgotten. And I'm well aware that depending on which kind of discipline you work with, so for example, if you have instruments that have prepared proprietary data formats that you cannot adhere to that, but if you're um, working with models or especially with textual data, with articles, make sure that you prefer open standards. Why? Because if it's proprietary and if the company uh, goes bankrupt and the, suddenly the, the format vanishes, um, you can have you can be, have a lot of trouble to recover the, the information in that file and sometimes you might not be able to do so. However, if you have an open standard, the chances are higher that you can still kind of reverse engineer and extract the data. And um, I'm speaking from uh, own experience here, from own research where we dealt with uh, environmental data, which was... Uh, 20 and up to 30 years old on, on different storage media. So um, make sure that if you store data, store it in an in a open, well-documented format. If it's not open, at least make sure that it's documented and widely used. So you might have help by, with, from peers to help you read it again. Um, also make sure to store it uncompressed and unencrypted because what also often happens, uh, for example, someone uh, makes a zip file and uh, locks it the password, leaves for a further postdoc position somewhere and uh, the password is forgotten in the group and no one can access the data anymore. And also if you are able to uh, have both original and uh, open copy, do that uh, if possible. Uh, this can be as simple as uh, converting all Word documents into PDF files and storing both, but basically the PDF is what is living longer. And if you're uh, writing in later, even better, because then you have uh, ASCII text in the, in the tech file, so that, that's even safer. Um, so don't, don't rely on file extensions and just keep that in mind and consider that data might be used in different operating systems. Uh, of course, this is not only your responsibility, but also the responsibility of the computing industry. Uh, but I think that they also need to see more pressure from the research communities, uh, that there, there really is a need for open standards. So I'd like to finish by uh, showing you uh, some of the services that we offer at the ETH. Um, Barbara will also talk more, more about some, some of them. Um, first of all, at the ETH library, um, there is the research collection. So it's our repository. Uh, Barbara will talk in more detail about that one, so I will skip that. Um, also regarding open access. So that's, that's that topic, but as I said uh, earlier, you can get also support for filling out the data management plan 
and you can get training on data management. And you can take a look at what we offer here at the Digital Curation Office where I work in. Uh, you can book trainings with us. You can write uh, to us if you have specific questions. And we are there to uh, try and help you uh, get through this uh, bu bureaucratic <laughs> thing. Um, also, when it comes to uh, IT services, there uh, are many people that can help you, especially from the scientific IT services. Uh, storage is usually provisioned via your uh, IT support group, and there are IT support groups uh, for all departments, so you need to contact them when it comes to storage. Uh, however, regarding active research data management, so meaning the data management during the course of research, where you, for example, need uh, things like Git or uh, electronic lab notebook, there you should contact <coughs> our colleagues from the scientific IT as well, and uh, they can offer you also spe specific software like the OpenBIS electronic lab notebook and laboratory information management system, which is especially useful for people uh, working in life sciences. I mentioned already GitLab and SharePoint. Um, feel free to contact uh, your IT providers for that. And uh, in case you need to patent uh, any of your uh, research findings, if you need to uh, put uh, licenses on the software you create, uh, there for these uh, sort of legal questions, the ETH transfer office can help you further. And as I mentioned, trainings are offered by ourselves, by the ETH library, by the different groups at the ETH library, and you can find many topics. You can find uh, courses about open access, about data management, about um, also, for example, reference management that you might need to use when writing uh, papers. Uh, the scientific IT services is offering trainings as well on different topics. For example, the ELN OpenBIS, uh, Python, etc. You can see the full uh, listing of the course they offer in this link. And the uh, ETH Information Center for Chemistry, Biology and Pharmacy, which is located just next door, is offering uh, many courses as well. So. Um, take a look at the, these links and um, I'm sure you'll find something which uh, can suit you and help you with your research. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'll be there for, for the questions later on. <laughs>